Before we look at inequality diagrams, we're going to need to make sure we understand the inequality symbols. We'll start with these two symbols here. The one on the left is read as less than, and the one on the right is greater than. People often get these two confused and the wrong way around. I like to remember that if you turn a less than symbol a little bit like this, it makes a letter L. So you can remember L for less than. Next we have these two symbols here, which look exactly the same apart from there's an extra line underneath them. The one on the left is like a less than symbol, but we would read it as less than or equal to. The one on the right is like a greater than symbol, but we'd read it as greater than or equal to. Now that we have the knowledge of those symbols, we can read statements that look like this. This says x is less than 6. So it means that x is any number that's less than 6. For example, 5. 5 is less than 6. Or 2. 2 is less than 6. Or even 0. That's less than 6. And so are negative numbers. Negative 3 is less than 6. It also doesn't have to be a whole number. It could be a decimal. For example, 3.9. The question is, should we include 6? Is 6 less than itself? Well, the answer is no. So for this inequality, 6 would not be included. However, if we change the symbol from less than to less than or equal to, we're now including the number 6, because 6 is equal to 6. Sometimes you get inequalities that have two symbols, like this one here. You could read this one in two parts. On the right-hand side here, it says that x is less than 8. So we want numbers that are less than 8. But on this side here, it says 3 is less than x. So 3 must be less than any of the numbers that we use for x. You could think of this the other way around, x is greater than 3. So we want numbers where x is less than 8, but greater than 3, which basically means x is in between 8 and 3. For example, 4, or 5, or 6, or 7. And once again, we don't rule out decimals, you could have 6.92 for example. You wouldn't be allowed to include the number 3 or 8 though, because these symbols say less than and not less than or equal to. If we change this symbol here though to a less than or equal to, we've now included the number 8. And if we change this symbol here, we've now included the number 3. Sometimes exam questions ask you to represent these inequalities onto a number line. We're going to start with x is less than 4, and here's a number line. To represent this on a number line, we first of all draw a circle above the number in the inequality so a circle above the number 4. We then add an arrow coming out of this circle to indicate the direction of all of the numbers that are allowed in this inequality. This inequality says x is less than 4, so we draw an arrow going over to the left because all of these numbers here are less than 4. When you draw your arrow, make sure it goes to the very end of the number line. Let's try another one, so this inequality here, and here's a number line. So we start by drawing a circle above that number, negative 2, and we need to use an arrow to indicate the numbers that are allowed. This one says x is greater than negative 2, so that's all of the numbers on the right of the circle, so we draw an arrow going to the right, all the way to the end of the number line. Now we'll try x is less than or equal to 1, with this number line here. We start by drawing a circle above the number in the inequality, that's number 1, and then we draw an arrow in the direction of the numbers that we are allowed, so this one will go to the left since we need to be less than 1, but for this question, there's one more thing we need to do. This inequality said x is less than or equal to 1. But at the moment, this looks just like a diagram that we would have drawn for x is less than 1. So how can we tell the difference? Well, to identify that this one's less than or equal to 1, we'd shade in the circle instead. This indicates that the number 1 is included in this inequality. Let's try another example. So x is greater than or equal to 0. So we'll start by drawing a circle above the number 0. We then need to draw an arrow in the direction of the numbers that are allowed, so the numbers to the right, since they're greater than 0, and because it's greater than or equal to, we'll shade in the circle. So whenever you have a greater than or equal to, or a less than or equal to, you must shade in the circle. If it's just a less than or a greater than, the circle won't be shaded. Sometimes we have to do these questions in reverse, so a diagram could be drawn for you and you have to write down the inequality. Let's try this first one here. The first thing to do is write down the letter, so we'll write down the letter x. Then we need to decide on the inequality symbol. I can see the numbers here are to the left, so they are less than negative 2, and the circle is not shaded, so I need to use a less than symbol rather than less than or equal to. So it's less than, and then we finish with the number that the circle is above, so negative 2. 
For this next one, we'll start with x. This time the numbers are to the right of the circle, so they are greater than, but I'll use greater than or equal to since the circle is shaded. And then we finish with the number that the circle is above, so negative 3. For this final one, we start with x. The numbers are to the right, so they are greater than 3, and the circle is not shaded, so it's just a regular greater than symbol, and the number that the circle is above is 3. You also need to be able to draw these inequality diagrams for those double inequalities that look like this. Remember that this meant x was in between negative 1 and 5. And because this one uses less than or equal to's, we would be allowed negative 1 and 5. Let's have a look at how we draw this onto a number line. So this time, since there are two numbers, we're going to draw two circles, one above each of them. So a circle above negative 1 and a circle above 5. Then, since this inequality is saying x is in between these two numbers, we draw a straight line connecting the two circles together. You can see that this line covers the numbers in between negative 1 and 5. Next, we need to decide if we're going to shade in the circles or not. If we look at the inequality, next to this negative 1, we have a less than or equal to symbol, which means negative 1 is included, so we shade in the circle above that number. Next to the 5, we also have a less than or equal to symbol, so the number 5 is included as well. So we also shade in the circle above the number 5. Let's try another example. So this time x is in between negative 6 and 2. So we're going to draw a circle above each of those numbers, one above negative 6 and one above 2. Then we connect them together with a straight line like this, and we need to decide if we shade in the circles. The symbol next to the negative 6 is a less than symbol, so we're not including the 6, so we leave that circle unshaded. The symbol next to the 2 is also a less than symbol, so we're not including 2, so that circle is also unshaded. Now let's do a couple more examples. So we'll do this one here. We're going to need to draw two circles, one above the 1, and one above the 4. We connect them together with a straight line, and then we need to decide if we shade in the circles. In the inequality, next to the number 1, we have a less than symbol, so we won't shade in the left circle. But next to the 4, we have a less than or equal to symbol, so we will shade in the right circle. And let's try this one here. So we need to draw two circles, one above negative 4 and one above 0. We connect them together with a straight line, and then we need to decide if we shade in the circles. Next to this negative 4, we have a less than or equal to, so we will shade in the first circle. And next to the 0, we have a regular less than, so we won't shade in the right circle. Once again, you need to be able to do these ones in reverse. So they could give you a diagram and ask you to write down the inequality. Let's try the first question. The first thing you want to do is write down the letter x again. Then we're going to need to draw two inequality symbols, one representing each of those circles. The circle on the left by the negative 5 is unshaded, so to the left of this x I write a less than symbol. The circle to the right above the 4 is also unshaded, so to the right of the x I write a less than symbol. Then all I need to do is add on the numbers. To the left I've got a negative 5, and to the right I have a 4. So this is saying that x is in between negative 5 and 4. Of course it can't be negative 5 or 4, which is why the circles are unshaded, and we've used less than symbols, rather than less than or equal to. Let's try this next one, so we write down x first of all. And the circle on the left this side is shaded, so we'll write a less than or equal to symbol. The circle on the right is unshaded, so we'll write a regular less than to the right. Then we need to put on the numbers. For the left we have a negative 2, and for the right we have a 3. And on to the final question, we start with x. The circle on the left is unshaded, so we write a less than. The circle on the right is shaded, so we write less than or equal to. And for the numbers, the number on the left is a 0, and the number on the right is a 5. Finally, one topic that's closely related to this is listing solutions to inequalities. You could be given a question that reads like this. You're given an inequality, you're told that x is an integer, and you need to write down all of the possible values for x. The word integer just means a whole number. So if we read this inequality, it says x is in between 1 and 7, and we are allowed to include 1 and 7 because we have less than or equal to symbols. So we're just looking for all of the whole numbers from 1 to 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Let's try another example. So this time we have this inequality, we are told that y is an integer, and we need to write down all of the possible values for y. So this inequality is saying that y is in between negative 3 and 3. But because of this less than symbol here, 
we're not allowed to include the number three. So we want all of the whole numbers from negative three up to three, but we're not going to include three itself. So we'll start with negative three, then we go negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, but we don't include three. Let's try another example. So this time we have m in between negative seven and zero, m is an integer, and we need to write down all of the possible values for m. So we're in between negative seven and zero, but this less than symbol here means we can't include the number negative seven, but we can have zero because it says less than or equal to next to that. So we're going to start with negative seven, but we're not allowed that, so we miss that one out. So we go to negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and remember we are allowed zero because it says less than or equal to. Now let's try one more example. We have n this time in between negative four and six, n is an integer, and we need to write down all of the possible values for n. So this time we're in between negative four and six, but we're not allowed negative four or six because they both use less than symbols. So we're not going to start at negative four, we're going to start at negative three. Then negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and we cannot include the number six, so we finished. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and why not go and try the exam questions in this video's description.